We got Dr. Kaku yeah, Dr. on the line. Yeah, Dr. Kaku is um, on the line. Sorry to make you wait there, sir. You're a very busy guy today with this info that came out overnight, huh? Yeah, very busy. I was just on uh, Good Morning America this morning. Yeah. And, you uh, braggart. <laughs> hey, did, did <laughs> That's you good. about uh, satellites falling from the sky? Yes. Uh, even Einstein's theory might be wrong. Oh, I, we forgot about the satellite. Where yeah. is that going to fall about? Well, uh, what area the of the world? The is that it's going to fall between 4 o'clock and 6 o'clock, probably in the Pacific or probably near Chile. But it's cold, right? Oh. These I hope they don't take out the Eddie, Eddie Vedder guy. No. Hi, yeah. Hi, Doc- hi, Dr. Kaku. It's Jim Norton. Right. Hi. And I wanted to uh, <laughs> say, did you, uh, I, I had long ago theorized that I remember uh, saying that the uh, neutrinos would probably travel faster than the speed of light. Uh, how, how do you, are you surprised to hear that? Do you think there's a flaw in their math? Well, I think there's a flaw in their experiment. However, they say that they've checked it over and over again that Neutrinos fired from Switzerland to Italy, 450 miles away, uh, arrived 60 billionths of a second faster than expected. Well, maybe it was just windy or something. No, I don't think so. (laughs) No. This result has to be looked at very carefully because Einstein's theory is the bedrock, the foundation of all of modern science. Uh, This phone call, GPS, atomic bombs, lasers, uh, black holes, expanding universes. All of it depends on Einstein's theory. So if Einstein is wrong, oh my God! But isn't it possible that he got like that? that maybe he just scratched the surface, and maybe there's there's three hundred more layers that he missed just because there's no way we could know it without computer help. Well, we think there is a layer below Einstein's theory. However, that layer is very exotic. Uh, that layer opens up only at the instant of the Big Bang, and the center of a black hole. However. In Italy, we don't expect to see violations of Einstein's theory with the neutrino beam, and that's why a lot of physicists are having a heart attack right now, contemplating the fact that every single physics textbook, every single experiment has to be revised if this experiment holds up. Wow. Well, maybe, uh, yeah, because I, I used to joke about, like, I bowl like a bunch of neutrinos. You know, everybody would laugh. Uh, I don't think they would. I don't think they'd laugh. Uh, now, now, why would this... Um... <laughs> How would this change anything, to tell you the truth? Uh, life still goes on. We still uh, sure. we still wake up in the morning. I mean, thank you. And what's a split second, really? I'm still finished in 30 it. seconds. Look at, look at the Internet. Look at communication satellites. All of it depends on electronics, which in turn depends on relativity theory. Sure. So if relativity is totally wrong, this phone conversation is going to go poof. Wait, 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 wait. Einstein was a hack from what I understand. Really? Yeah. yeah. Now, now, but, 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 but wouldn't that... His it was all puffy. Just the fact that our GPS yeah, does work there. and all this does, in fact, work, doesn't that say that nothing will change because it would have yeah. changed? That's why I suspect that they made a mistake. Ah, see? Yeah, years ago, in the 1960s, there was even more sensational news that the speed of light rose in daytime and fell at nighttime, according to one physics experiment. Mm. So people said that's a hard thing to believe, that the speed of light could rise and fall with the day. Then it turns out that the experimental apparatus was outdoors and was sensitive to temperature of outdoors, and that's why they were getting the speed of light varying between morning and night. Oh, of course. Yes. Dr. Kaku, this is, uh, this is Jim Norton. Mm-hmm. Doesn't it strike you as odd, though, that as much as we learned that Einstein would have pegged the main theory this kind of soon after uh, industrial uh, technology began. Doesn't it seem kind of odd that he would have gotten it right this early in the game for us as a species who's possibly going to travel in space someday or or live in space? That's true. It would seem like the odds would be... uh, Looking at it historically, we realize that Einstein was ahead of his time. His special theory of relativity beat out his competitors, but the general theory, I think, was maybe 50 years ahead of its time. Mm-hmm. Uh, even today, we're shocked at how advanced it is, given right. the fact that it was proposed in 1915. Probably because he was... Is Canadian. Isaac Newton in, uh, in uh, uh, what's the other dude? Isaac Newton in... in Bill Tetley? Co- Bill, Bill Tetley and Copernicus. Co- Copernicus. Are, they, are they hacks in your profession at this point? Are they antiquated, or is Isaac Newton still a yeah. pretty, pretty cool dude? If you're an Apple salesman. Yeah. Inside the solar system at low velocities, we still use Newton's laws of motion to shoot space satellites to Saturn and Jupiter. Uh, we don't use Einstein's theory because we go near the speed of light. However, lasers, GPS, the internet, lasers. all lasers. of that use things near the speed of light. And then Einstein's theory, not Newton's theory, is used in high-tech work. 
So all the high tech wizardry that we see around us with iPods and iPads and internet and microwave uh, towers. All of that comes from Einstein. So here's a question, Dr. Kaku. Um, uh, Jim was saying something earlier that I disagree with. That they uh-huh. can they can recreate you. Like, do you think one day they'll be able to recreate who you are? Um, I know you don't have a soul, but it, it's like, or not that you don't have a soul, but you know you don't believe in God. Whatever, whatever. But they can well, actually they? Cre- create you, and you actually go, oh shit, I'm still here. As me, as opposed to a clone that looks like you DNA wise, but doesn't have your same uh, That's a swagger. essence or whatever you mm. swagger. So this Fear. is actually a subject of debate among physicists because teleportation, mm. we've actually attained it at the atomic level. And one day, if we teleport Captain Kirk, uh, then who is this imposter over there who claims to be Captain Kirk, mm-hmm. who, who sells Priceline? And uh, has all the personality quirks of Captain Kirk. Well, is it possible? This is this is Jim Norton again. Is it possible that if if you learn now, Ray Kurzweil talks about, and I'm not saying he's the be all end all, but lo- loading ourselves eventually onto computers and your personality and who you are will be on a computer. Is it possible? That if that's how simple it is, and if everything is just a chemical reaction that is eventually figured out by computers, and there is no difference between the uploaded version of me, essence-wise, and the me that's talking to you right now, that you could technically live in two places at one time, just like, say, a a 60 billionth of a second apart. Uh, Yeah, and if we have quantum teleportation, and we're able to create a copy of you, atom for atom, then in principle, there might be more than one copy of you, and it's within the laws of physics. I'm not mm. saying that it's possible. So if they clone you, they they would you it is is theoretically theoretically there could be a clone of Dr. Kaku who is also a physicist. Yeah, you can't rule it out. There's no there's no law of physics preventing that, put it that way. But who also However, thinks I like you too. A hundred years from attaining that kind of uh, capability. A hundred years. But what that. about an exact parallel thinking between the two because it's such an accurate uh, representation of the other that that whatever chemical reaction makes thought and your thought process and your own soul would there can there be exact duplicate thinking and reasoning well that's beyond our capability and I think maybe for a hundred years that's going to be beyond our capability hundred years so that's, that's nothing like, a little a, more than that a tape recorder and the tape recorder sounds like you. The tape recorder has all the mannerisms of you. It does not mean it is you. Right. Yeah. And it's going to take, you know, many, many decades before we can get a tape recorder to mimic your personality, to be spontaneous. Uh, to be hilarious. Them. Right. But, 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 but again, you're talking a hundred years ago, a hundred years from now, maybe. You're not saying it's an impossibility. You're saying we're probably a hundred years out from that type of thing with technology. Uh, advancing, it's advancing as quickly right. and, and and as it is. So so I once that no once law of physics preventing it. Once that's accomplished, then that is immortality. Yes. Well, yeah, but who wants to live inside a tape recorder? Who wants to live? No, 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 no. You no. won't be in the a tape clo- recorder. The cloning, the actual making of y- another you. Yeah, it's conceivable. You can't rule it out. So that then that will be now. Um, you will now be uh, uh, immortal. Because, immortal. But would your body you have, is replaceable. Would you have all the memories that you had had in your first body into that second body, so you can t- continue being? Why not? Just yes. program it into it's your new body. It's all chemical stuff. We just don't right. know how it works yet. But once a computer, once we figure out chemically what is a memory, what is that visual image that becomes a memory in your mind? How does your mm-hmm. mind relate something and remember it sure. and see it? That could be re- uh, re- yeah, be recreated. fucking easy. It's like it's like car- this is, dittos. This is the thing. The Big Bang Theory. Oh, I'm sorry, Doctor. What's that, Doctor? If, if you could replace every neuron in your brain with a transistor and have a duplicate brain made out of transistors with exactly the same architecture as your own brain, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. then it would, in principle, have the same responses. That is, same personality. Right. It would have the same wishes, goals, instincts. This is Dr. Doc- mm. It fires the same. This is Jim Norton again. How are you? Hi. I Just curiosity, this is an odd thing. Now, you think that our universe may have started uh, coming out of the kind of the ass end of a black hole. Is that correct? Is that a possibility? 
is a, there is a possibility that maybe we are a white hole. Oh, we should tell about the video hole. I saw. Doesn't it sound odd, though, that we just... Doesn't, doesn't the whole thing, we come from, like, this little atom seem a little... Is it possible that we yeah. kind of were a, con, a condensed planet or something from another universe? And you know how it gets down to singularity and it kind of kicked us out the ass end of a, uh, of a black but it, hole? It, 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 like but we're just debris. a very a much smaller version of something that was, say, a, yeah. a foot long. But of, you, like, the super... You know what... Well, it, it, things that aren't explained... I'm sorry, go ahead. <laughs> we, we could be a white hole instead of absorbing... A white hole, which basically just shows up on time as opposed to a black hole. But can I ask this? Can I, can I ask this? We fucking... Oh, guys. <laughs> we, we know, we know yeah. that the heart beats and what the heart does and what right. it does. But we That's don't right. know how it... We don't know what the motor is. There's no real beginning to the heart or even this Big Bang Theory, to me... It's like there was a before the Big Bang Theory. There was a something before the Big Bang. Like the idea of nothingness doesn't register with yeah, me. Yeah, we, like, can't, just, we can't wrap our minds around nothing. We had to start nothing. with nothingness. Well, but then nothingness is something. Right, right. right. What, what's that, well, Dr. Kako? You think what happened before the Big Bang was that there was a multiverse. If our universe is a soap bubble that's expanding, that there could be other soap bubbles out there in a multiverse which looks like a bubble bath. And these bubbles fission, creating like baby bubble bubbles, which yeah. then expand, giving you the Big Bang Theory. And, and the what's count in on take me away or something. <laughs> exactly, Chip. Big Bangs could be happening all the time. But what's, uh, what's in between? Universes. What's in between these... Uh, space. What's that? Beyond the, uh, beyond the bubble Hyperspace? is a higher dimension. So it's basically space that is... Oh. is expanding, but then talking. people ask, what is the Big Bang expanding into? If the bubble is three-dimensional, then what it's expanding into is four, five, six dimensions. Oh, we shit. Think up to 11 dimensions. So we think that Second in 11 dimension. dimensions, that I, is a true arena of the multiverse. Wow. So and do you by, guarantee, do you guarantee that... That the idea of aliens, that they're always smarter than us. Could we possibly be the highest developed creature in the universe? I find it very unlikely, given the fact that the Kepler telescope, Kepler satellite has now surveyed the galaxy. One out of every 200 stars apparently has an Earth-like planet going around it. Hmm. And so I think that we can now calculate how many planets there are in the galaxy that are Earth-like. It's in the billions. And that's only our galaxy. But I'm saying, do you think we could be the 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 smartest creature in the whole universe? He's saying no. That's, that's almost that's impossible. Very unlikely. Hmm. In which case, other civilizations could be thousands, millions of years ahead of us, because the universe is 13.7 billion years old. So what's a million years out of 13.7 billion years? Now, okay, here's, that's the question. 13.7 billion years. What was the year before that? Do you understand? Like... That's what confuses me that my mind can't get my head around yeah. is the I nothingness before the existence of the universe. Right. What's that? What do you think it was? Our universe is probably connected by an umbilical cord to a parent universe. There was another universe that existed before our universe. Jesus, that's wow. a lot of time. So 13.7. can peel off baby soap bubbles. Now, you're saying 13.7, and they say that's a kind of a give or take, like a 40-year ratio? I go with the soap bubble. I'm it's going so bubble. One percent. Uh, we know the age of the universe to within one percent accuracy. So you should celebrate its birthday or something. Get a big hat. Oh, chip. Doctor Kakuku, is it possible that we're already connected to a a, a higher life form? Uh, where? I mean, where would this higher exactly. life form? I, I, I don't, I don't do know mean? how the connection would be, but from somewhere else, where they're way more advanced than us, and we're already connected to them in some way, connected but we just don't way? know that. I don't know. Like, we, I'm not a physicist. Wait, tell we're, fucking they, dick jokes. They gave us the ingredients to soap, and then left. Yes. Dr. Kako. Somehow there's already a connection. We just don't, we're not smart enough on our level to even understand that yet. Well, some physicists have said that maybe the aliens are already here, perhaps on the moon, just like in the movie 2001. Uh -huh. uh, they would send robots to explore the moons of the universe, because moons are quite stable, and they would essentially have listening posts. And so maybe on our moon there is evidence of a previous visitation. Mm -hmm. So we are about 100 years uh, away from having the technology. Everything's 100 to years away. It's a like a, when a contract says like two say. weeks. Is it right. possible, Dr. Kaku? Hi, this is Paul Hoggis. Is it possible that when you get like a really young universe, that like an older universe could go inside of it? Oh, uh, well, yeah, in the sense <laughs> that if our universe collapses into a big crunch, then maybe it'll disappear into another universe. However, the latest 
uh, the experimental data indicates that we're going to have a big freeze rather than a oh. freeze. A Patrice? A big freeze. A oh. Wow. Put that's, your mittens on. <laughs> that's crazy. Yeah. Hey, can we ask you about the 3D printers? We just learned about them yeah. a little bit uh, yeah, right? in the last week or so. Uh, where's this technology going? Well, ultimately, maybe within 100 years. It'll Another 100 years? You yeah. can't say 100 years for everything. Uh, I, I think years. he's saying 100 years because he's going to be dead, right? and he don't give a shit. So 100 yes. is the same as a million. It don't give a shit. That sounds like yeah, sounds a, something phys Yeah, they just, they say, just say 100 years. The goal of the 3D printer is to get a replicator. Just yes. Like Star Trek. Right. That's the goal. In fact, I had my face replicated in 3D by such a device for, ah, for the Science Channel. Sounds frightening. Yeah. Did you did you see it and go, hi, I'm me. Oh, hi. Oh. <laughs> yeah, that's and scary. It, it took about 20 minutes to create a carbon copy of my face in three dimensions uh, made out of plastic using a 3D printer. They scanned my face with a laser beam. And then using plastic, created it's a 3D expressive. image of my face. <laughs> George Lucas did that shit. Wow. Yeah, it was amazing. Yeah. Industrial in the future, magic. instead of using plastic, we'll use flesh. About right, 100 they, years. We can, we can already put cells inside a laser printer, a, a dot matrix printer, and shoot out cells instead of ink. So, and create heart tissue this way. That's crazy. Is how, there, long is do you any, oh. how, long, how long do you think it'll take to get that technology where we can actually maybe use it? Oh, uh, well, the technology 100. exists already by which we can create heart tissue. That's already been done at Wake Forest University in North Carolina. So how long until well, we really held a school to go? About, about, about 100 years? years? We're a replicator like Star Trek. Do you, yeah. do you think, Dr. Kaku, it's he possible? Did. I've often theorized this. He that he did. He did. If once we learn how to bend space-time and things of that nature and go through wormholes. Is it possible once you can upload somebody on a computer, you could just zap them there and print them out? I think I asked you that, but do you, it's not physically impossible that you could just... You, a computer could see exactly... In a hundred years, motherfucker, he said that! But then we oh. could just zap a person, like, just go... Yeah. Who's, who's talking, by the way? Jim Norton, Dr. Kaku. Yeah? <laughs> yeah? I, I have yet to see a law of physics that prevents that capability. Yeah. Yeah, see, you're a physics guy, so unless there's a law of physics that says something can't be done, you will assume that in time it right. can be done. It can be done. Yes. And that time would be probably about 100. And time travel is definitely not possible, right? Yes. Uh, no, there's a theory of time travel that's being looked at very seriously. Mm. To go in the past or go into the future? I can't imagine you can go in the past. That has no, no, to be no, no. impossible. Uh, there, are, there are hundreds of solutions of Einstein's equations which take you to the past. And uh, if you have something called negative energy, then you could actually hold the gateway open. So basically, Patrice action. is a time-traveling vessel. Because <laughs> 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 he said that you have negative energy. Oh, you fucking douche. <laughs> that was a good one. Now, a good one. Here's, the, here's, the, here's my last question. Absolutely my last question. Yeah, we got to get if, going. I, if... Yeah. if Say you're the Tupac of physics. Physics, who's the biggie of physics? Who's either your counterpart that you respect a, a lot, or your counterpart that you go, this guy is just it's ridiculous. Bill Tetley. Or like, who's the big Kahuna out there? Yeah, Who, was, in your in Dr. your Steve. estimation, or you know, if you're the big Kahuna, say you. But who's the guy? Yeah, who's that the, that I should Google to to that you know either respect the guy you or, look up to, like a yeah. Doctor Chipperson, well, or in in string theory. Uh, which is, you know, what I do for a living. Uh, one of the great engines of string theory that generates a lot of ideas is a guy named Ed Witten at the Institute for Advanced Study at Princeton, where Einstein worked. So um, he's a guy that likes to keep a low profile, but he's, he's basically uh, one of the big engines that drives the whole theory forward. Hmm. Is string theory looking like it's real? or is it, uh, Some people say it's a bunch of bunk, pardon my French. Uh, no, we're, we're, we're in the process of testing the periphery of it with a large hadron collider. Next year, it'll be zapped up to full power, and we'll be able to hopefully create particles. Particles are higher vibrations of the string. So the people who say that you cannot test string theory simply don't know anything about string theory. If you see a, if you see a string, like let's just say there's silly. string theory, is it possible to cut one of those strings in half? Uh, yeah, we think that ordinary atoms are made out of vibrating strings. Every time you split an atom, uh, you're splitting a string. So isn't a vibrating string made up of something smaller? If you can cut it in half, isn't there something that makes up a vibrating string, which is smaller? 
Uh, yeah, but uh, every time you cut a string, you get another string. So yeah. the unit of strings is the smallest you can get. So oh, if you oh. cut Jim Norton in half, will both of those halves live? Like a mollusk? <laughs> Barely. I like a jellyfish. Like some kind of jellyfish. Yeah. <laughs> A slow All right. Hey, Dr. Conker, what are we promoting today, sir? Uh, the universe. Well, I'm, I just got off my uh, book tour, Physics of the Future, hit number six on the New York Times bestseller list. Oh, congratulations. oh congratulations. Happy ending to number four. Ah. So a lot of people are, are curious about the future, and I've interviewed over 300 of the world's top scientists for that book. Yeah. So uh, one you know, of a lot them. of people want to know what, what's in the laboratory, what's being done mm -hmm. that will change their lives. Who's your favorite uh, comedian? Uh, favorite comedian? Yeah. Maybe, I don't know. I don't think I have one. <laughs> yeah, of course not. <laughs> Michael laugh. Richards. The only laugh that he does is when it's an uncomfortable moment. <laughs> yeah, he kind of just goes... <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> you don't, yeah. you don't uh, watch uh, comedians there, Dr. Kaku? We have a few on the show. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. Maybe the people on, maybe the people on uh, Oppie and Anthony. Yeah. Yes. Have you heard of... Uh, <laughs> Oppie. I love him. <laughs> have you heard of Jim Norton? Jim Norton? Uh, well, I have now. There yeah. you go. All right. Hey, that's nice. Well, next time, well, maybe, maybe next time he'll recognize you. You've met a few times. Uh, Do you laugh at Stephen Hawking? When y'all meet up, you just go, <laughs> look at you, stupid. Uh, I can't hear. What was the question? I missed it. It was a Stephen Hawking thing. Uh, <laughs> you just want to smack feel, his dumb straw out of his mouth? Yeah, you feel sorry for him? <laughs> no. Oh. no uh, he's lost control over everything except his um, blinking muscles. Wow. And it's his, important. Uh, facial muscles. Eventually, I think we may actually hook up an electrode to his brain directly and hook his brain to a computer. Uh, this has been suggested seriously. It's just an experiment. Oh, he's, he's done. He's like done in terms of... No, he, he's still blinking his shit out. Yeah, but he's, I'm saying he's... Oh, he's still... He's still blinking his shit thinking. out. He's still thinking as smart as he ever thought. Mm. His body his just his went brain, kablooey. His brain is very active, except that he has lost control over his muscles. Yeah, he's not. he can't uh, pop lock. With, with a stroke victims, we've already done that. We've always hooked up the brain of a stroke victim directly to a laptop. They can now surf the web. It's great. Half the laptop works. They can uh, do emails, write emails, answer emails. They can do anything you can do on a computer, and they're totally paralyzed. You can send an email to, like, Ethel at... .com. <laughs> yes. I think I think um, you yeah. could. That's yeah. fucked up. What well, he just I think, said. I think Stephen Hawking's brain is perfectly normal. Yeah. Uh, his brain is. Sure. Just as but he has no more theories anymore. Like he can't because you can't. How do you get blink him out? out of no, he can. He's blinking shit. No, he still. has theories, but yeah. there's no more that's going to be. What if he's trying to blink out a number like three million two hundred and eighteen thousand, but he has to start over? It's going to take a while. Now, it's, it's a tremendous problem that he has. He can't use his hands to use a pencil to catch. Jimmy can't either when he acts. Uh, <laughs> I terrible. know. Shit. Without using your hands, man. Yeah. It's like, oof. Uh, well, Dr. Cocker, thank, thank you, you much. so much. Okay. Yes. For, always a pleasure, uh, sir. Always a pleasure. Always, always a pleasure. Always very insightful. Uh, thank you so much, sir. Yes. Uh, okay, bye. Uh, bye. We'll talk soon. Dr. Oh, Kaku. Hi. Okay. Ah! Uh, I was I'll writing. I was writing notes to Patrice. Uh, Jim has met Doctor Kaku. Oh, they yeah, live yeah. in the same building. They've it's, been in the uh, same elevator, and he's still. And he goes, Jimmy he says goes, hello to him to all the time. I don't mind. I'll see him, and I'll see him again, and, I, and he just gets frightened when you're like, "Hey, how are you?" <laughs> oh, he goes, ah, he's such a. He's a skittish. It's weird to be. I can't imagine being so physically unimpressive. To, that he just don't remember you he ever. Does not remember you. And I know Norton, that side of Norton, his brain just doesn't work. Norton wants to believe that he does it with everybody, but he no. don't. But no. does he not remember you either? He doesn't he, remember. I don't think he remembers ever Oppie, being on the show. Oppie. Oppie. No, I like well, the, I, I like the idea certainly, but I live right next to Jimmy and I see him all the time and I say, "Hey, Opie from Opie and Anthony," and he but does Patrice, this clueless weird thing and runs away. <laughs> like, he, he's not wrong. Asshole. No, no, no. He's not wrong. I like your theory, Patrice. He's it, not it's, wrong. It's, I would like to think that's what's going on. Here, I have but. met the same people forty times who always put their hand out and introduce themselves. I really do not leave a lasting impression. <laughs> you know what? <laughs> <laughs> the way <laughs> the way uh, I would be uh, flattered, he calls you Oppie, and Oppie. that's uh, like Oppenheimer, who was, uh, sure. you know, yeah, the father physicist. of the atomic bomb. There, uh, that's probably why he thinks Oppie instead of. Uh, oh yeah, Opie. he does. He has no clue. <laughs> Norton, Opie would be silly. <laughs> he has no clue. Norton just is not, you know. No. He said, Hi, like, this is Jim Norton. He uh, said, "This is Jim yeah. Norton" four times yeah. in the same conversation, uh, and there was no uh, recognition. On my tombstone, it's just going to say, "Here lies Jim Norton, remarkably forgettable." Oh, yeah, because he's saying Jim Norton, and he's is, talking about metaphysics and. Yeah, yeah, a couple minutes.
Oh, okay. Uh-huh. Metaphysics and everything. I met just... a physics too. I was like, how you doing? It's a high chip. Oh, you didn't. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's just a, a living bowl of grits with no butter on it. <laughs> <laughs> no salt, nothing. Yeah, just... your grits. Why don't you kiss my grits? Fucking Kaku we... just doesn't pay me. <laughs> we got a break. He's so poor, he can't pay attention. You have to at this point. Oh, oh shit. It's not really? even a choice. I'll just keep schooling you. Uh, Big Mama Prods is in studio. That's Patrice O'Neill, Stress Factory, this weekend, tonight and Saturday, or tomorrow, obviously. Tonight <laughs> and tomorrow. 732 545 ha ha. These tickets should sell out, right? So they should call ahead. Uh, yeah. They should yeah, start call fucking feet calling, or call man. Hands if you're oh, call God. Ahead. Patrice O'Neill at the Stress Factory uh, tonight and tomorrow. <laughs> When we what, get back, Vinny said hi, by the way. What? Tell you that. Vinny. Fuck Vinny fuck him, and his fuck stupid him. chicken wings. Fuck him. Fuck him. Hey, he's got good food there, too, actually. He, he runs a nice joint. Uh, Chris Cornell next. Stay there. Hey, this is Dr. Michio Kaku, and you're listening to Oppie and Anthony. Opie and Anthony. Oh, 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 oh I'm sorry, Ryan. Hey, this is Dr. Michio Kaku, and you're listening to Oppie and... No, oh, Oppie? Opie. Opie. Opie, all right. Okay, Opie, right. Opie, right. We physicists always pronounce it Opie because of a famous physicist, Oppenheimer. Okay, Opie. Okay. Ah, see, we didn't know that. Yeah, he, he built the atomic bomb. Yeah. Hey, this is Dr. Michio Kaku. You're listening to Opie and Anthony. Three, two, one. Hey, 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 hey. This is Dr. Michio Kaku. Hey, 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 hey. This is, this is, this is Dr. Michio Kaku. Kaku, Kaku. Kaku, 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 Kaku,